The Empire's on the run. Alex Jones and the GCN Radio Network. Introducing Pro One. All of your filtration in one system, portable, on the go. No more do you have two or three filters to just reduce sodium fluoride. You have a system that cuts out the sodium fluoride and up to 95% of hydrofluorosilicic acid. Advanced manufacturing technology combines silver impregnated white ceramic with new Aquamedics advanced media for removal of fluoride and other heavy metals all in one filter element. It is the only one that does it and out of the gates. We have it discounted at 10% off with promo code WATER. This is the only system that in one unit helps reduce or remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, ammonia, and chlorine, hydrofluorosilicic acid, the most common form of fluoride not covered by other fluoride filter brands, and sodium hexafluorosilicate. Get your Pro Pure with a new Pro One filter today at InfoWarsStore.com or by calling 888-253-3139. Why does the United States spend the largest percentage of GDP in the world on health care? Why do we have the highest cancer rates on the planet? The highest rates of diabetes, autism, and every other major disease. It all comes down to one thing. We are what we eat. Our food is devoid of nutrition and processed with poisons and additives. Our water is filled with toxic poisons and big pharma runoff. All of this has been engineered by design. We can turn the tide against the eugenicist by giving ourselves the nutrients our body desperately needs. To learn more, visit InfoWarsHealth.com. The site is literally packed with audio and video featuring top health professionals who don't bow down to Big Pharma. The fight against the New World Order starts with you, and you can't stand against the machine of your sick, tired, and obese. When you visit InfoWarsHealth.com, be sure and check out the catalog with nearly 400 life-changing products. And get free shipping when you sign up for AutoShip. Hi folks, Alex Jones here with some important information. I want to tell you about Matt Redhawk and his team of patriots over at My Patriot Supply. Several years ago, Matt was sitting in his two-bedroom apartment, frustrated with the direction this country was headed, and the charlatans willing to sell us out for a quick buck. Deciding to take action, a company run by Patriots for Patriots was born. My Patriot Supply has never taken a loan or accepted outside funding. They now operate two distribution facilities and employ over 50 hardworking American men and women. It is rare to find companies who practice what they preach. And that's why I stock my pantry with high-quality storable foods from My Patriot Supply. Go to MyPatriotSupply.com forward slash Alex today for special offers on emergency food storage or call their preparedness specialist at 866-229-0927. That's 866-229-0927. Do business with someone who shares your values. MyPatriotSupply.com slash Alex. Crashing through the lies and disinformation, it's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight filling in for Alex. Alex will be joining us at the top of the hour to talk about these recent media revelations about false flags and what it shows us the way the mainstream media, specifically MSNBC, is reacting to some of this news. I'm joined right now by Paul Joseph Watson in England, but I'm hesitating here a little bit. I just got handed a new breaking piece of news here. There was this case, and you will not believe this verdict. This is a case out of Washington, D.C., and of course, Washington, D.C. does everything they can to try to stop any kind of firearms ownership. Even though they lost in Heller versus D.C. five years ago, they're still going after people for any kind of paraphernalia even that uh, looks like it's coming from guns. Now, this is a situation where a fellow was flagged by his ex-wife trying to get even with him. She knew that he was a hunter. She knew that he had guns. But, of course, he kept those in Virginia where it was legal. He had his place raided twice. In one of these raids, what they found was a 20, 25 conical-shaped forty five caliber bullets made by him out of lead and copper. They don't have primer, they don't have gunpowder, so they can't be propelled. And they also found matching 50 caliber plastic sabos that were also in the box for his muzzle loader. Now, they have convicted him for violating 
their gun laws. They're in violation of the Supreme Court. Even though the Supreme Court said their gun laws are in violation of the Constitution, they ignore the Supreme Court, just like they ignore the Constitution. And then they go and hang this guy because he's got some plastic cases that he can push bullets into a muzzle loader with. Or he's got some bullets that don't have any propulsion attached to them, just having the lead. Now, I don't know what they're going to do with them. I don't, haven't, we just got this story here, so I guess it's going to break. I don't, they may not have even sentenced him. But joining us in the UK is Paul Joseph Watson. And Paul, I wanted to have on because he had an amazing story yesterday. It's amazing, not only a revelation of a government getting caught red-handed plotting a false flag, but then also, this is to start a war with Syria, which is apparently the number one goal of the New World Order and the globalists, the McCain as well as Obama. They all want to start a war with Syria. And the reaction that the press had to it, which all they did was cover the fact that YouTube was shut down in the country. Now, that's a big story when they shut down YouTube. It was a big story when Turkey shut down Twitter. But they didn't look at the content. So joining us now is Paul Joseph Watson. Welcome, Paul. Hi, David. Good to be back. Amazing story that you had yesterday. I couldn't believe it. It was a super video that you did where you went one by one talking about the BBC and about CNN and how they completely <laughs> glossed over what was revealed. Well, at its root, it's censorship, David. Yeah. I've done an update article today, which is scandal, mass media censors, shocking admission of Turkish false flag. And I basically list the quotes which came out of the leaked audio tape, which emerged yesterday. This was a bugged conversation between top Turkish military and political officials, wherein they basically discuss staging a false flag attack, a provocation which they would launch on themselves in order to have a pretext to invade Syria by means of blaming Al-Qaeda, which of course, as we know, has transferred with Syrian aid, with Turkish aid, sorry, from Turkey into Syria. So, I mean, just look at some of the quotes that came out of this audio tape, and then we can talk about how the media responded. Quote, I'll make up a cause of war by ordering a missile attack on Turkey. That's Hakan Fidan, the head of Turkish intelligence, saying that. <laughs> it's amazing. Literally the head of their intelligence saying, I'm going to order an attack on ourselves in order to create a pretext for war. Deputy Chief of Military Staff Yasser Gula, what we're going to do is a direct cause of war. And then Fidan responds again, we can also prepare an attack on Suleiman Shah Tum if necessary. Now Suleiman Shah Tum is this site which is actually in northern Syria but is considered Turkish territory. It's defended by Turkish special forces. So they're openly, brazenly caught red-handed planning an attack on their own military site yes. in order to create a pretext to go into Syria. And they use that word. They say, if, it, if you, it's a pretext you need, I'll give you one. Pretext can be arranged. It's, it's pretty amazing. But, you know, this has been happening over and over again. This is what we talk about, and it's not conspiracy theories. It's conspiracy fact. These guys were conspiring to illegally attack their own troops. Why? So they could start a war. Have we seen this before? Many times. We've seen this many times from the American government. Look at Operation Northwoods, where you had a conspiracy to essentially fly planes into buildings, remote control, to attack shopping malls, to do that so they could start a war with Cuba. Sounds a lot like 9-11, doesn't it? Well, exactly. And remember, Turkey is a NATO member. Of course, they yes. were the original progenitors of Operation Gladio throughout the 60s, 70s, and 80s, replete with acts of staged terror to demonize political enemies. And then you look at the context of this, which is Turkish elections coming up on the weekend. Obviously, we had the event a few days ago where Turkey shot down a Syrian warplane that was targeting al-Qaeda terrorists in Syrian territory, and Turkey has provided air support, logistics, and artillery for members of al-Nusra, the al-Qaeda terror group, as they cross from Turkey into Syria. So Turkey's been arming, defending, providing air cover for these terrorists, and now we have the open admission that they plan to attack a site in Syria uh, in order to create the pretext for war. And as you said, 
I mean, literally, these quotes are out of some kind of James Bond film. Right. Quote, listen, listen, Commander, if it's a pretext, <laughs> we'll give you one. I'll send over four men and have them fire eight rockets on an empty lot. That's not the problem. Pretext can be arranged. And yeah. then Fidan, again, the head of Turkish intelligence states, if necessary, we'll mount an attack against that place, referring to Suleiman Shartoum. We'll do the attack up front. So <laughs> there's not even room for conjecture here. According to the leaked tape, which Erdogan, the Turkish prime minister, has tacitly admitted is genuine because he complained about the fact that it was immoral and villainous to leak a, a tape out of a private security meeting. But the translation is now confirmed. It's there brazenly planning false flag attacks. And now we can look at how the mainstream media reacted to this. Yeah, I think. But let's let's look at his reaction initially, because that's the same reaction we see from WikiLeaks uh, about the WikiLeaks, about the Snowden documents from people like John McCain and the very people who are pushing for war in Syria are typically the same ones who want the NSA to be able to look at everything that we do to violate the Fourth Amendment, to violate everybody's privacy. And whenever their criminal actions are exposed, they always attack the whistleblower. And that was exactly what the Turkish government did. They attacked these people as being villainous and dishonest. And yet they're the ones who are the villains or the guys who are plotting missile attacks on their own troops. The dishonest ones are the ones who are covering that up. That's the media. Talk about the media's reaction to this. Well, I mean, that's an excellent point, David. I heard you talking about that on the night of the news last night and, in fact, stole it for a tweet that I made this morning. But it's an excellent point. Erdogan reacted almost exactly the same as the U.S. establishment reacted to Snowden, which is chilling given the fact that Erdogan in recent months has moved closer and closer to acting like a complete dictator, of course, banning Twitter a few days ago. And then today he said that the YouTube ban would be lifted if YouTube agreed to remove the content. So they <laughs> want the video of them planning these false flag attacks gone, uh, or they're not going to reinstate YouTube. And basically, treason in, Tur in Turkey is punishable by lifetime imprisonment. To wow. me, this represents brazen planning of treason, attacking your own country. Mm -hmm. So all these individuals named should spend the rest of their lives rotting in a, in a Midnight Express-style Turkish dungeon. And yeah. so should Erdogan, because he's basically acting like a complete dictator. But the mainstream media is not giving it the attention it deserves, because he's part of the US. He's a client state. Turkey is a client state of NATO. So... If we can get into how the media responded to this, absolutely. Well, well, before, we, before we get to that, let's talk about that. Let's talk about the consequences of that. Because, you know, when it came out about operations, Nor Operation Northwoods and the plots that were being uh, suggested to the president, JFK turned it down. He sent Limitzer, dismissed him from his position. He then went to NATO. And when he went to NATO, that's when the Gladio attacks began. So here's this guy, he moves from one place to another, and that's when they start doing the false flag attacks. And for people who don't know, Gladio was a case where they blamed it on the communists, on the Red Brigades, but it was actually right-wing people, people who were working with NATO. They had prepositioned weapons to be as a kind of a bulwark against a communist Russian invasion so that if they overran the country, if they overran Italy, they would have these weapon caches there and they could start an internal insurrection, a guerrilla war against the communist invasion. Well, it wasn't just the Italians. It wasn't just Limitzer. It was also, as Sibel Edmonds points out, it was people from Turkey. They got a lot of gangsters released out of Turkish prisons that they call babas. That's their kind of term for godfather. They were very much involved in Operation Gladio. So you've got situations where they're, you know, shooting up uh, public areas, bombs, shootings. They're blaming it on the communists, and they're doing it as a false flag so they can win elections, not necessarily start a war at that case, but they were just doing it so they could get the communists who were starting to win elections taken out. But let's talk about what the media has to say about this. You had a great selection of uh, quotes from the different big, big media, BBC, CNN, the rest of them. Go ahead, Paul. I think, David, the most flagrant one is Reuters, which we just listed, we just reeled off the quotes where they say, you know, we can attack the Suleiman Shah tomb. If we need a pretext, we will get it. Quote, we'll mount an attack against that place, Suleiman Shah tomb. Reuters reported this 
They said that the conversation, quote, appeared to center on a possible operation to secure the tomb of Suleiman Shah. So <laughs> the, the leaked conversation is actually them saying they're going to attack the tomb themselves uh, in order to create a pretext for war. Reuters says they're going to secure.